If you're new to CMD, we've been set up as a YouTube channel with a difference. All the revenue that we generate from videos like the one you're watching right now lands to a designated bank account. All of those funds, every single penny, is being donated to local and national good causes. More recently, we made a donation of £1,500 to Birmingham Children's Hospital, and that's off the back of people like you watching videos like this. So if you like what you see, give us a like, hit that subscribe button, and I look forward to seeing you guys soon. Cheers. Hi guys, welcome back to CMD and another video. You join me with the Polestar 2, another EV for the channel. I'm really excited to show you a little bit about it actually. It's certainly surpassed my expectations in the last few days that I've been driving it. It's been lent to me by a friend and work colleague whilst he's making use of another vehicle. And so I've had a really good opportunity to sort of use the car for everything I would use on a day-to-day -day basis and really get to know it a little bit. But this car's really caught me off guard. Um, it has a few different personalities. Initially, let's talk about the exterior and the design. To do that, I'm gonna have to take you on tour. So design-wise, I always thought of this as a saloon, but actually it sort of sits a bit like an SUV. It's not tall enough to call it an SUV, but you can see, I mean, the car's on 20s, it's a good size arch gap there and then it sits quite 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 bulbous almost so it turns out after i did my research obviously polestar volvo's previous performance arm now electric division actually used the volvo xc40 platform to develop the car hence the slightly raised stance i quite like it though it's got some really really nice design touches the wing mirrors are frameless I think the front end, this car, obviously black on black, but the black really suits it. Like a lot of electric cars these days, limited colour palette to choose from. The boots, huge. It's a great size, you can wave your foot underneath it. I'm really glad that worked. Obviously, you know, excuse camera equipment, but cavernous nothing you can't fit in there and yeah i just think exterior wise they've just really nailed the looks everything's very sleek there's lots of really trick lines blacked out glass very un volvo until you get inside they've put a nice sticker on here just to let you know what model you're driving what kilowatt hour you have i think that's something i might be looking to remove if it was mine but yeah i think overall i think they've really nailed the uh the exterior what do you guys think Right, let's get inside. And here we are, in the interior. Immediately, very nice, very simple place to sit. However, in comparison to the Tesla Model Y, or in fact, any other electric car I've driven, there's a, it feels a lot more closed in than others. There's a, a huge transmission tunnel here for what I have no idea. There's a small pocket down the side, which is, uh, which has got antibacterial hand gel in. Woo! Interior wise though, it's a very nice space. A little bit more closed in. I actually quite like that. Feels like a, an older car in that respect. But, but actually, I think they've, they've missed out on a few tricks in the same, same point. There's a, a small door card. There's one cup holder, which, I mean, a car like this, arguably, if I was going to go EV, this would be a family car for, for me. You've, you've got to have two cup holders. There it is. I found it. They've thought of it. So if you open the glove box up, which does go all the way, there's another cup holder down here, along with a cloth to clean all of your high black gloss materials. Now, for those of you who watch the channel, you'll be aware that I'm not a fan of high gloss black, so we won't mention it. This car has got the uh, grey interior, seats are super comfortable, I've got lumbar adjustment, I can extend the support under my, under my thighs. It's a really, really comfortable place to sit. Nice steering wheel, very simple dash. Shall we go for a drive? Pop into drive like all EVs, and you go. So like I mentioned, I've spent quite a bit of time in the car, 
racked up a couple of hundred miles. It's been recharged at home. We've got a charger at home. I've got a direct comparison. The wife has a Tesla Model Y. So what I'm not gonna do in this video is talk to you about um, how fast it charges, kilowatt hours, so on and so forth. If you're interested in looking at one of these, you'll be doing your own research into that anyway. What I would say is that in comparison to some of the EVs I've driven, this is performing very close to the range predicted. The Tesla seems quite good at it. You would hope so, wouldn't you? Again, they're the benchmark. Right, well, we've got an opportunity, national speed limit, dual carriage rows. If you, uh, if you do put your foot down, it will go like a scalded rat. And whilst it is quite dramatic, it does throw you back in your seat. And whilst I might be minded to say it sounds like there's a lot of road noise, I think the reality is because there is no other noise, it sounds like there's a lot of road noise, but there's not. Seating position I think is, is really good, really strong. Uh, a criticism, I don't think the steering wheel moves enough so I would like the steering wheel a little bit closer to me but I am at the maximum level of that adjustment will not come out any further know a few others they've got a little bit more I think where this car thrives and excels however is in making a journey as easy and simple and laid back as possible they've gone for a, a big screen in the middle uh, they've flipped landscape to to portrait uh, and they've got their own infotainment system. It's relatively easy to follow. Um, I'm not a huge fan of touch screens on the premise that I feel like they're a little bit dangerous sometimes when you're trying to touch stuff and move, but it's a relatively simple system to follow. Into your driver modes, you can choose from steering feel, you can have your ESC on or off, um, one pedal drive, so if you want that off completely, low or standard, and if you want the car to creep. There's lots of other assistant modes there you can choose from it help you with your charge and a few other bits, so the car status and all your settings into, into locking, etc. If you move on to the main menu, as it were, it's sort of almost like a, um, a tile approach. You have got Google Assistant, so you can speak to Google. Hey Google, turn on my heated seat. All right, turning on the seat heater for the driver. So that works quite well, excellent. And there's other, other things you can use in there. There's things like range, assistance. Again, great, but not great while you're necessarily driving. It doesn't have Apple CarPlay. You can play Bluetooth media through your phone through a very nice Harman Kardon sound system. You can use Spotify, Google Maps, and it all works rather nicely. Dash in front of you. I've gone very simplistic. I've gone with the, with the blacked out display. If I push a button, I can have a map right in front of me a bit like the audi virtual cockpit it's okay it works nice but it's of you know it's of no no benefit to me and the speedo goes quite small and this is what it's been like to drive on a day-to-day -day basis it is genuinely a very comfortable very nice feeling very easy place to drive it doesn't feel like you have to do a huge amount the pedal is very intuitive um, the regen isn't too aggressive other thing you get, you obviously get a little uh, cubby in the front of the car, very useful. There's wireless charging, USB-C points. Um, that at the moment has got my phone, the car key, my wallet and my sunglasses in. Um, and I would use that as I have done. That's literally how it's looked all week. Really quick and grab. They've definitely thought about the overall layout of the car. My only criticism of the interior, and it is genuinely my only criticism, is that I feel like we're a little bit more penned in and they could have made a little bit more use of the space. When you start taking it for a, a bit more of a drive, you know, you're aware it's a big heavy car and back to sort of the size, I'm not at SUV height and I'm not, <laughs> and I'm not at a uh, at saloon height. It's a really peculiar, uh, really peculiar place. I quite like it. The car feels solid firm it's not an uncomfortable ride it's, you can feel it ironing out a lot of the bumps but you are aware you're hitting them i bought it down this road on purpose i know it's not the greatest but it seems to be doing a good job of of managing those the other reason i've bought the car down this road is i know it leads to some good windy roads acceleration can be very smooth extremely linear non-dramatic it really can 
and I think I think the car sort of urges you to drive it like that. It drives at its best. I mean, right now, 30 and a 30, and it's just very serene, very easy to drive. Um, it doesn't make you feel like you want to do more. It's, it's really, really lovely. And then onward and upward into the into the fun stuff. And the car will, I mean, it handles very well. Obviously, big 20 inches on this car. Optional extra, well worth ticking, I reckon. But it handles handles roads lovely. I think the mid-range punch is as impressive as the as the pull-off. Pull-off, like all electric cars, it just goes. Very light switch on off. But I think the handling for being that little bit firmer certainly benefits now, where it's just very easy. For a car so big and so heavy, it's very truckable. It feels very competent. I'm on a, a sort of a wet, damp British road, windy, and it just feels feels like you could do anything that you asked it to. Yeah. You're away throwing some weight around, but it's lovely. Really like this pan roof. It's really nice. It's an awful lot of light into the cabin because this has got the lighter interior as well. It's not something you necessarily pick. Is it a grey interior? Um, but I think it really suits the car. All the materials are vegan, apparently. What that fully means, I don't understand. But I assume no cows were harmed in the making of it, at least. And actually, you know, feels nice. Feels certainly comfy to sit in. I wouldn't say I miss conventional leather for the um, for the difference. And if that is helping something somehow, then, then I'm all for it. I hope you've enjoyed my thoughts and review on this car. If you're new to the channel, be sure to check in soon for more EV content and some really, really special supercar content incoming. But for now, I'm gonna take my very serene drive home and I look forward to seeing you guys soon. Cheers. Mm -hmm.